Hello, this is Captain James Weatherly. I've had the privilege of commanding all versions of the 747. I made this video because some of you may have a friend or family member who flies the 747 Classic Freighter, or maybe you're just interested in it. Here's a little overview lets you peek inside of the Boeing 747 Classic Freighter. September 30th, 1968, first giant 747 is presented to the world. This is a milestone in Boeing history, a time to look forward, and a time to look back. The Boeing 747 was created in a different time era when travel was luxurious, kind of like cruises are today. I can remember getting on that very first 747 for me in 1970. But all that luxury has been taken away. Now it's cleared out and there's a huge, vast cargo hold on the main deck. It spans the whole length of where passengers were. You just look down, it seems to go forever. And this is where we carry all sorts of different things, including one of the most important things, my suitcase. Now some of the aircraft are converted passenger ones, others are dedicated freighters. You can see if that nose open up, it was built as a freighter. Well, here we are inside the cargo hold. Nothing's actually here. You can see it's a pretty big vacant space. Kind of give you a picture from outside. Walk over here, it's really rainy here. In the week of Christmas here, I'm flying for UPS, but kind of gives you a little look of how big this now the natural question anybody would have to have when you look outside, how are you going to get all this cargo on this airplane? Looks like miles and miles of stuff. Well the cargo is either put on a pallet or in what we call an igloo. And sometimes there's a little train of them that will pull them over to a loader. And that loader brings them up inside and inside the cargo the floor has a cargo loading system and actually moves these pallets along the floor into its various positions so that finally when you're done your igloos or your pallets will be all in position fairly simply or so the plan is. Well, the cargo is getting loaded. Oh, the background noise? It's very noisy around a freighter, but ultimately when they finish, you got a full load of cargo, and that's how the freighter works. One thing about the 747, it's big. Recently I had a brand new first officer. We're sitting in the cockpit, and he says, you know, in the cockpit it doesn't seem very big. But when we drive up to the airplane, James, it just gets huge. And that's true. The closer you get, the bigger it seems to be. Here's some numbers. When we're all ready to go and take off, we weigh for takeoff 833,000 pounds. In that cargo area I just showed you, we can put almost a quarter million pounds of cargo. And when we pull up to our, quote, gas station and say, fill her up, that's 51 thousand gallons of gasoline. That's big by anybody's standard. When you see in pictures, it looks big, but you don't have anything to compare it to. When we put human beings next to it, that tells you something. Look at this nose gear now with the guy standing next to it. His head barely comes to the runway turnoff lights. When we look at a flight engineer who's six foot tall walking around checking the airplane, he looks like a midget next to the huge engines. When we look at men standing around loading, checking, doing things on the airplane, it almost looks like little play army men. And when you look at somebody standing next to the main landing gear, this is the body gear, they look very small. Here's a video about it. Maybe that'll help you. Oh, sorry, you can't hear anything? You're supposed to wear your earplugs when you're outside. It's really noisy. Well, the first thing you're going to notice is you got to climb a big set of stairs, and I mean big. 
with your luggage and everything to get up there. When you look down this way, you can tell what I'm talking about. It's quite a bit of huffing and puffing. So first thing, you climb up the stairs with your bags to get on board. And when you finally get up there, you set your bags down. You can see them on the left-hand corner, but then you got to climb up another set of stairs to get to the actual cockpit. When you finally make it, you can look back down and be careful, don't fall. Now we enter into the cockpit. On the right side is where the first officer sits, and on the left side is where the captain sits. And in that seat immediately in front of you on the right is where the flight engineer sits. He has a busy job. He controls all the aircraft systems. My friend Joe here is at the flight engineer's panel. He's watching over things like fuel, electricity, hydraulics, air conditioning. He also does the pre-flight, reads all our checklists, and does all our paperwork. I was a flight engineer about three decades ago. I'm glad there's somebody to help me. That's a tough job. Thank you, Joe. Now back up front. This is the pilot station and the flight instruments. We have instruments to navigate anywhere in the world. It tells us where we are, what attitude we're at, so we can navigate successfully. We also have a rudimentary autopilot that can help us so we don't have to fly all the time. Otherwise, on a 10-hour trip, it would be totally exhausting. Some freighters have been updated to a more modern uh, instrumentation, similar to a Boeing 757, where some of the old instruments are replaced with electronic instruments. You can clearly see in this picture where we have cathode ray based electronic instruments. These are much nicer, more reliable, and give us better navigational information. Along with these, our old navigation computers have been replaced with FMS, flight management systems. They even draw a pretty, what we call the magenta line, to show us where we are. These are very helpful. We have a number of different models, but they effectively do the same thing, computers that help us navigate. Also, we have a wide variety of engine instrumentation to show us exactly how all four engines are operating at any time. This one has to be a different version where they're expressed in a linear picture as to what each engine is doing. One of the best pieces of equipment we have is our eyeball and the window. We can look out and see wonderful things such as in the early morning hours approaching the Arabian Peninsula and coming over the wilderness in Muscat. Or maybe we're flying along over the North Atlantic and see a Delta airplane right below us and offer, say, hey, can we take your picture and email it to them later? Or maybe we're crossing over Italy and then on into Switzerland, see the beauty of the snow-covered Alps during the summertime as we pass over and look at the visitors in the valley below. Or maybe it's Thanksgiving morning when the sunrise is beautiful and we're over the Indian Ocean. Whatever it is, the window is probably the best piece of equipment and we have the best seat in the house. Call this last section the studio apartment, or AKA the crew rest area. Because we travel on very long range flights, sometimes we carry complete additional flight crews and often we carry both mechanics and load masters on board. So behind the cockpit, we have a nice galley section with an oven, coffee pot, and sometimes even a chiller where we can prepare our meals that are placed on board for us. Sometimes we have delicious ones like this steak out of Tushkan in Uzbekistan. Other times we have fish that hasn't been refrigerated and I would never recommend eating that. We also in that area have business class seats for the people I talked about to travel in. They're in a couple of different configurations, reasonably comfortable. Behind the business class seats is what for me is the most important area, the crew bunks. Usually we have two to three bunk beds in there where the off-duty crews can rest. This one's a nice clean one with nice sheets, which is really nice. Hope you enjoy this as much as I've enjoyed preparing it. Here's a video that puts it all together. Well, now we have just walked up the upper steps. Immediately to the right is the emergency exit on the upper deck. Now we're gonna walk into the cockpit. It's not a very big cockpit, it's extremely small. On the right is where the flight engineer sits and all his various switches. And then up front are both the pilot stations and the engine control. Now, the first officer sits over here. He has to squeeze in. That's where his side is. And on the left side is where the captain sits and flies the airplane from that side. Either pilot can operate the airplane, but normally the captain is in command, sits on the left side. 
Now when you go back out the door and watch out, that's the stairs, you definitely don't want to fall down those, you see some emergency equipment. And then to the left is where the galley is, uh, where we heat our meals, but this oven, like I said, is an operative. And then back here is lavatory. It's nighttime, so you can't see too much, but we do have a potty on board, which is very important, obviously, on a long-range trip. Back here is where the business class seats are. Let's see if we find, oh, there's the flight engineer. He's exhausted, taking a nap before we get going. There's the mechanic looking at our onboard laptop computer, looking at some maintenance issue, trying to make sure it gets resolved. He says he's the good looking mechanic. There's where I'm sitting, kind of just relaxing, waiting for our cargo to be loaded. And most importantly, back here is where the crew rest is. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and for my fellow crew members, I hope this helps explain some of what you do for a living to your friends and family. And for those of you who are just enthusiasts, hope you've enjoyed this video on the 747 Classic Freighter.